You know, because uh, everybody leaf is very different, and like you said, you know, the, everything is different in terms of composition. You know, the the material, um, the place where the temples are, the stones are. So basically, so in general, I know that everybody leaf and every stone, every monument is very different. So. At each uh, restoration, so how, how much time do you need to restore? And uh, at the same time, you know, how many specialists uh, do you need in order for the work to be smooth, sir? Okay. Yeah, actually, we have a look uh, at the last work site up there. Yes, sir. Uh, this was uh, first uh, focusing on, on Apsara reliefs, which was more than half a year work. But then we extended the scaffolding also to reach the big pediments on the, on the other side and then another year we needed for this. Of course, uh, if we have one Apsara, the time is much shorter than if we have a group like in the corners of the towers mm. over there of 10 Apsaras. Uh, if we have a, a small tower or if we have a huge tower like this, yes, sir. Uh, we were working on the towers on the second level now. We are on the third tower we are working. The first one, it took more or less four years. Mm. But for this, we had to prepare the methodology and the st uh, strategy for such huge towers. Yes, sir. And now for this tower, it was only two years. And we expect the same when we uh, move the scaffolding mm. from here to the north. So the, the, restoration, tower. the restoration of this tower from the very top, uh, from the very bottom to the top, it takes two years, sir. It has taken two years okay. from the top to the bottom. Oh, top we go. top to the bottom. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It took uh, two years, but this is due to the experience we have from the uh, mm. from the other towers. The time becomes shorter. Because on we, the other we hand, know, we yeah, have to yeah. say we have to keep the scaffolding now mm. for another half a year, even when the conservation is finished. Yes, sir. Because the materials need reaction time. Oh, so you mean the new material needs to adapt the, to the, the old one? The silicate I was explaining, it has a long time where it has to protect it, be, be protected from rain, yes, especially, sir. and from sun. Otherwise, it will react immediately and then the result is very, very bad. So yes, more sir. damages then, uh, yeah. So we have to keep it like it is now for longer time. This is also something the team uh, looks after very precisely and then we can dismantle and move to the next tower. Mm. Yeah. The question down in the Soyavaman gallery is somehow totally different. The bus reliefs are more or less well preserved. Mm. Even we have damages and our team is doing a monitoring and doing always minor maintenance intervention on small spots. Yes, sir. But what we are trying to fix there is the water intrusion uh, from the roof or from mm. the walls. If you're down there, you can see a black, a black uh, water runoff or the black comes from algae growing there. Yeah? Yes, sir. And now we did the first section and now we extend the scaffolding. To, so this we calculate at least one, one and a half years mm. or even two. It depends on the question if we can find the leakage point very easily, if we have to do little intervention yes. or if we, do, if we have to do a lot of large intervention. So, so it's very hard to determine an exact time because so for example, one thing is the accessibility. The taller you go, maybe the harder it will yeah. restore naturally. So. Accessibility, of mm. course, is also something where, yeah, if we can reach it from the floor, yeah. small yeah. scaffolding, uh, everything very quick. Yeah, but up he there, it's quite difficult mm. yeah, to construct a, a safe scaffolding. And especially here, you can see the scaffoldings on the other towers uh, in the outside, they were more than 25 meters high. Yeah? So this is a lot of material. And of course, this needs time to construct. And then it's a huge service, surface area, such a, a big tower. And as I explained to you, we don't focus only where we have still decoration. The whole tower, also there where we don't have any decoration anymore, must be conserved. Mm, I see, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, right now we are standing um, on the lower level from the very top of the tower. And of course, sir, now we are seeing uh, the pediment part of the tower. Sir. But you know, I, I, there, there's no bar relief, sir. Is it because of it has been decayed or it has not been completed yet, sir, let's say? Actually, we are convinced it was completed. 
Yes, sir. We uh, are exactly above the level of the of the galleries mm. of the second enclosure. Yes, and there we have this huge pediment. For sure it was carved. We can see still some relics of the carved surface, which is very detailed, yeah. But yes, due to weathering, it's all gone, more or less mm. all gone. On the other hand, you can also see that we have conserved it like if it would have been a, a decorated surface. Yeah? Otherwise, the, uh, the speed of weathering will increase, yeah? so we can reduce the speed of, uh, uh, of the deterioration even on this era which are not decorated anymore. Yes, sir. But how do you restore it, sir? Like, do you apply you know, new material on top of everything? Or do you only apply to certain points in that thing? Yeah, actually, uh, here, for sure, it had to, uh, has been cleaned first. Mm. Yeah, yes, sir. a lot of biology on, must be cleaned. Then it's consolidated with ethyl silicate, which mm. penetrates into the stone. And we reach more or less the, the outside the same level of strength like the stone, the unweathered stone has inside. Yes, sir. Yeah? Then all joints are closed with mortars. All edges of the scales or the layers, you can see, are we call it pointing. The mortar is applied. Mm. And at the end, a sort of a very liquid mortar, uh, yes, we call it wash, is applied everywhere. And with, uh, uh, with the uh, yeah, foam, it's like with the massage. Oh pushed in into the small, very small open spaces and then the rest is removed again. And this is the appearance. It looks like the original stone. Mm. No, no coverage with what has been done in former times, acrylic resin, yeah, which is contraproductive, uh, but it's now stabilized. Yeah? Yes, sir. But of course, it's a patient which mm. is badly damaged and it needs maintenance, observation, main, uh, monitoring, and maintenance over the time. So this part over here, I can say it is more or less uh, restored. So it's conserved, it's conserved, conserved yeah. yeah. The whole tower now is conserved, mm. and especially also these pediments, yeah. Yes, sir. Here one point, this we would call restoration. When the gaps are too big, mm, the to be team, applied. Hmm? For mortar, too, for mortar, too wide for mortar application, the team puts in uh, new pieces, new stone pieces. And then they can apply the mortar later in, in the gap? It's not necessary. Oh. Oh. Yeah, the, this is, the, to close the gap finally, this is mortar again, yeah, but this yes, piece, or this one, yeah, it's sandstone, yeah, mm. a new sandstone piece. This we would uh, call restoration. This restoration. is part of restoration when we add new materials, new stone, mm. but you can see here the, uh, the, the gap was very big and for this the motors are, cannot be used, we use, yeah. But you can also see the new piece is exactly dressed that it fits mm. into the gap we, we observe. So yeah? the restorer have to cut the stone very precisely yes, to the to yes, that exact yes. dimension. Yeah. So the, yeah. Not in, in Europe, for example, uh, they just cut, cut when some parts were damaged, they cut out a square mm. hole and then they put in a the square new one. A new square <laughs> one, yeah. But we don't do it here. Here we do it totally different. And now it, also in Europe, they start to change the, oh. the attitude, no, yeah. No. But this one definitely takes more time, sir. Of course, this takes much more time. More yeah. time and yeah. more Stone mason can do a square thing like this, uh, maybe. In, in two hours, yeah. For this, he has to work much longer, of course, yeah. Because he always has to test if it's fitting or not, take mm. it out, then chiseling again. And of course, it shouldn't, uh, he shouldn't chisel off too much. Then we have again big gaps, yeah. And so. then we need to add a smaller gap or maybe just redo the entire yeah, thing. Yeah, so. yeah. It's very hard to see up close when you're down there. Yeah, yeah, of course. When, you know, when it's basically in front of you, yeah. It's a different story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this is a very important point for our research mm -hmm. on the question of the deterioration uh, and the damages on the uh, development. Yeah? Yes, 
So first of all, we have to go out when it's raining. Mm. <laughs> Most people sit in the office when it's raining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, second, uh, of course, outside you also get dirty and it's hot and you're sweating in the office. Everything is fine. Yeah? <laughs> uh, but this is the job of conservation scientists, heritage uh, professionals, especially conservators. The second thing is we want to know how quick it develops. And for this, we, uh, we needed uh, pictures. Yeah? Mm. Uh, I showed you one from uh, Giselle Hiver from yeah. 1995. This was lucky that we found. And then we could show how quick in between the few, some cent, uh, uh, decades, it disappeared quickly. Mm. Yeah? Uh, but most people, also the old people who, who came to take photographs, they always focused on the beautiful bas reliefs, well preserved, mm. by, because they wanted to show. How the, we never find something about the damages. So we, we don't know exactly when it was damaged and how, for how long? So. We don't know when it was damaged. We can only, maybe this, we do it down at the, at the, at the when, we, when we stop again. We have an, another example how we can follow up the development of, of deterioration. So if uh, some Apsarasa de uh, are, are decayed, we, we cannot know how many Apsarasa are there in Angkosa for, for, for uh, you know, the exact number? Actually, uh, I'm convinced we can. Oh. Okay. Because even when they, of course, for example, in a, in a corner of the, tem uh, the, the towers I mentioned, for example, uh, or I showed to you where we have this uh, decayed Apsara. Nevertheless, we can see next to it, there's still the crown. Mm. And uh, there's another one where maybe part of the hand is still survived. Mm. And then from the other yeah, side, yeah. the same. And then we have uh, inside mm. uh, an, a corner where we have a single uh, yes, Apsaras. Sir. So this is the pattern we can compare with other towers. Sometimes these Apsaras are still there on the tower in the Northeast. They are totally lost. So, but we, we, yeah, this was also a problem with my colleague when we started. He was uh, photographing the Apsaras. Yes, sir. And we were counting and making a risk map. Mm. Yeah? And our numbers were always different. He always had less Apsaras than we had mm. because he didn't take photographs of the disappeared ones. Mm. But the disappeared ones have for, have for us the same uh, yeah, uh, yeah. importance nearly like the existing ones. So it doesn't have to be a full size Apsara, it can be a finger of an Apsara? Where we can still see there was one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. So here we are mm. on the level of the lower bus reliefs and below you have the lintel. Yes, so the lintel. <laughs> the conserved lintel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and of here, yeah. here, of course, here we are lucky that mm -hmm. big parts of the bus relief is still preserved. So we know about this is Ramayana, yeah, mm. and uh, because of the monkeys, because of the monkeys and the god here, Vishnu. Oh, sitting on Garuda here. On Garuda, Garuda yes. yes. Yeah. But very often the central figure is missing. Mm. Of course, uh, and only normal figures, no monkey. So it's very difficult to decide whether what what iconography we have on this uh, relief. Yeah? Yes, sir. But uh, in this section here, I see that there are restoration, uh, conservation. Is yes, that correct, sir. Only little, only little, mm. closing the joints. And this is something which uh, I think it's a very successful uh, topic. Uh, especially also now around the corner, this one here, for example, you can see, we have been working on this pediment already in 2002, something like that. 2002, we had the scaffolding here for the pediment only, mm. yeah, and not the whole tower. And so in 2002, we did the conservation and this is very, still very stable. So we nearly didn't have to do uh, here only minor, minor um, uh, maintenance work, yeah. But the original, the from more than 20 years ago, it's still in a very good condition. You can see here. 
But but sir, how 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 do you know that it is stable by looking at what factors? We can test. We have different oh. uh, test tools, testing okay. tools. Uh, we can do it with a mi video microscope. We can do. We have a tool. It's called drilling resistance. Uh, a small drill of three millimeters is pressed to the wall and pushed into the wall. Mm. And you can imagine when this, uh, uh, we, we have a writer on top, an XY writer, and when it's drilling in and it's going constantly, we can mm. see the f uh, that it's stable. If, uh, if there's a uh, weak surface, the drill goes in quickly. Yeah, it, it jumps out. Jump out, yeah. out okay. then, yeah. You can, yeah. So there are different possibilities, yeah. But there is no means that we will replace the, no. the broken one. No, we keep them as it is. This is the philosophy of conservation, yeah. Not to add anything. On the other hand, we mm. don't know how it, what was it, yeah. Most probably monkeys, yeah. Mm. But. Uh, very often now in restoration they copy something, but uh, we are not uh, convinced this should be done in the bus reliefs. Yeah. At the same time, we also see um, some algae or moss growing yeah. on the on the stone, and you know, in in the Onco Charter, they also mentioned that the moss can also protect the stone. Because they keep, you know, the, the different, different. Oh, different. The yeah. lichens oh, can okay, protect. Oh, okay, okay, Yeah. So lichens, this is the lichen. Yeah. Yeah. The moss is a bit more difficult mm. because the, uh, of course, also the lichens live from the stone somehow and from the exchange with air, yeah, and they water. They say the microbiology uh, it's, colonization. It's or a colonization yeah. of uh, algae and 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 uh, and uh, bacteria. Yeah, uh, and in our opinion, they protect more than they damage. Mm. The moss, the roots of the moss go into the stone, so they damage by the roots. And secondly, where we have moss, uh, they keep the humidity in oh. this spot longer. But they are longer. very small, sir. They are very small as but well. But they can yeah. do a lot of work yeah, yeah. compared to their size. Algae, the same, yeah. Mm. So it's also it's okay to keep some of them doing their Actually, job. Actually, we are convinced it's yeah. uh, we should not clean the temple where it's not necessary. Mm. It's necessary where we have to apply uh, conservation materials, consolidant or, uh, or uh, mortars. Yes, sir. Uh, if we have put the mortars on top of the biology, the biology will puff or push off the mortar and then. We it result is, yeah, zero, yeah. But if mm. there's no need, like here, for conservation, yeah, it's very stable. You can touch and you can feel it's no sanding, nothing. Uh, we should keep it because we are in a tropical climate, mm. and very quickly the biology will come back. Then you decide, okay, oh, there's now again biology, so we have to clean. And cleaning, growing, cleaning, growing, cleaning, growing is a Will cyclic process. Be very expensive. Not <laughs> only very expensive and time consuming, but also part of the deterioration process. Oh, because okay, also okay. cleaning can have a negative influence on the, on the mm. stone. So we so, cannot clean all the time. We need to be limited no. in our cleaning. Actually, also. just one example. The Angkor Wat yeah. was cleaned in between 1986 and 1993. Yes, sir. Yeah. I still saw the last intervention, which was the West Gallery. Mm. It was totally clean. Three years later, it was black as well. Mm. Now the whole temple is more or less black. Yeah the roofs and the walls partly, etc. Yes, sir. So, and of course, these huge building, you cannot clean every three or five years. Yeah? Mm. First of all, time. Second, then it will become really uh, expensive and you have to build up scaffoldings a lot. Yeah, mm. You cannot do it by just by helicopter spraying or something like that. Yeah? Yeah, then you have to close it for visitors and for prayers as well. Yeah? Mm. I see, so. You see, after the cleaning of the 1996 intervention, 
everything in Angkor Wat was bright, like the wall there with the windows. Looks all the same. And especially this gallery, I observed three years later, it was already dark. And the population now is also different from the population, the biological population, different from the one before. Yes, sir. Uh, if you go to Bayon, you have much more lichens than we have here. Lichens are very sensitive uh, against uh, yeah, cleaning action chemicals. Mm. And uh, uh, even when the, when the pollution in the air would grow, lichens suffer from the pollution. Here we don't have a problem with it. Yeah? So you have to be, uh, you have to know a lot about plants also. Yeah, of course. In order to, yeah, yeah. to, yeah, yeah. to conserve yeah, them, yeah. to save them, yes sir. Actually, that's why we say we are the only really scientifically based conservation project. Mm. Because the first uh, approach was for, let's say, uh, the first three years, we prepared the project with scientific methods. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And only then we started with application of conservation interventions. Yeah? Yes, sir. But step by step, we trained the team. In between, you saw the, the casts to protect emergency consolidation. And, and of course, for like another point, uh, we started with the Apsara, even when we saw back da big damages on the pediments. Yeah. But uh, at the beginning, we only had little infrastructure, no scaffoldings, but these were, could be reached. And time by time, we got scaffolding, more scaffolding, so we could go up to the pediments, yeah, 2002, yeah. And since 2016, we have enough scaffolding to put around the whole towers. And of course, it must be safe. Maybe you have seen on the other side, yes, sir. only little floors, some, somewhere, some but our team has to work precisely. They cannot check if they can go a step backwards or not. They must be safe on a, on a solid floor. And this is what I uh, was talking, uh, security, of yes, sir. course. But how about the inscription, sir? Like the inscription written on the wall, or maybe the inscription still, that, you know, the, the monolithic. Yeah. Do, you, do you restore the inscription the same way you restore the body leaf, sir? Yeah, yeah. The same way? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we had a longer project at Prasad Kravan, oh, yeah. where we did the conservation of the lintels. Mm -hmm. We did research inside on the polychromy, on the paints inside yep. on the bus reliefs. And we did an investigation on the very important inscriptions. In that time, together with uh, 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 Professor Thomas Maxwell mm -hmm. from I IIS, Angkor Inscription Survey. And uh, there we did a lot of tests how we can clean these very, very delicate, uh, delicate right. yeah, and yeah. sensitive and highly yeah. endangered inscription. Mm. And then after long testing with different chemicals, we applied the, uh, the, the uh, uh, cleaning. Yes, sir. Uh, and we stabilized the door jams, yeah. Uh, on the inscription, sometimes if it's really weathered, we have to apply some uh, consolidation as well. Yeah. But uh, this is, was a nice story also to show uh, how the tourists behave. Yeah. Uh, I made a, uh, no, what is it? The contrary of slow motion is uh, 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 time uh, where everything is going very quickly. Huh? time-lapse uh, time movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? And I could show how the tourists go in, go out. They have umbrellas uh, scratching the door frames. They have their backpack. Uh, some want to go out, the other. So they are pushing each other and even inside, it's too crowded. They scratch at the back when they have to go back at the bus reliefs, etc. Uh, and I proposed at that time uh, to close totally and to put a huge uh, panel from, for the central tower to see what's inside. Yeah? Mm. And to put a solar panel on top 
cables, small tiny cables down, nice LED lights inside, so if the people pass outside, yeah, they nevertheless, when it's a little bit illuminated inside, can see the bus relief. Mm. But now, at least it's closed and the uh, inscriptions are protected. Are protected from But there are many problems with the inscription. We just have been for the ICC in Preavi here in Kokair, and Kokair has a lot of uh, endangered inscriptions. Yeah, this is a big problem as still. So like you mentioned, you know, the tip of the umbrella and the backpack can over time They destroy. scratch and they, scratch they destroy. Time. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They are in any case very fragile. Yeah. I see. So, okay. Yeah, here is again, we have the same 2002, the repair motors. Mm. Yeah. And still well, well con connected to the stone, very stable. So we may go to the Apsara. Okay. Yes, sir.